I think his biggest attribute probably is his awareness of the game. He's the ta tactical ability to, before the game, go over the opposition, uh, to make the team play the way he, he feels is the best way to play against the opposition. And at half time to come in, and if things aren't going well, to be able to change the pattern of play and go out in the second half and turn the game round. I don't think there's any secret behind the man. I mean, he's. Uh... His knowledge of the game is fantastic. I mean, not, not that I've been with any other managers really under anybody else, but his knowledge is fantastic and his motivation to the players. You know, he gets, he gets the best out of every player. There's no doubt about that. You know, he knows each individual and how to work them to get the best out of them. Well, the most important thing, I think, is that all us younger managers look up to Mr Ferguson, with him being uh, the older uh, manager among the ones in Scotland at the moment. It's great to see the lads enjoying a game, just enjoying themselves. When one of our scouts comes back from watching a youngster play, we like to hear about his enthusiasm as much as his ability. It's important to know that he'll play just as well when the weather's bad or his team's losing. I only hope that today, after all the work we've done, our players will have the same kind of enthusiasm. All of them will, I'm certain of that. Knowing that is about the only thing that makes Saturdays just about bearable. Before a match, he's a very nervous person. That's starting probably the, the Friday evening, he's very nervous. Uh, even the start of this season, I was down with uh, Manchester United at the Charity Shield, and he phoned my hotel in the morning, and the league was starting up here. He says, I've had enough of a rough night's sleep again. He says, I can't bear thinking about it. I hate pre-season, the first game of the season. Um, he said, I've just signed uh, Stevie Cowan just away to Hibs. We're playing him the first game of the season. I can see Cowan scoring the winning goal or something like that. I think it's hard for him. I think he really wants to be out in the park doing what we are doing. Uh, he's obviously trying to get himself motivated. He struts about the dressing room a bit and he goes around the players and disappears into the toilet for 10, 15 minutes. But he gets really uptight before a game. People say that um... They may be classed as a born winner, people who are classed as born winners. I don't think it really applies in my case when you consider it really. I didn't win much as a player. Um, I never really won any big prize at all as a player. But I had this great desire to win. And of course, I mean, it doesn't matter which situation I was in as a player. This uh, came through in my, in my attitude towards the game. Always wanting to win, a great desire to win. I think it's carried me right into management. But the winning thing that um, is part of wanting to win and being a bad loser, you know, that um, a terrible loser. Without any shadow of doubt, I think that's uh, uh, an important part of Alec Ferguson. And uh, I don't think that uh, there's any place in football for uh, really good losers. People will argue on that one, but uh, make no mistake, it, they're none as like losing. And uh, Alec would not like to be a good loser. I don't mind losing with a bit of respect, but uh, beyond any shadow of doubt, we don't like losing. He definitely is the world's worst loser. There's no doubt about that. At any game he plays, maybe the quiz on the team bus going to the game, Snooker's another one he hates getting beat at snooker. I've seen men transfer for beating him at snooker. He's breeding that into everybody that comes to the club, and that can only be good for the club. I think Alec is a marvellous product of all that's good in his environment, the environment which shaped him. He doesn't try to be a Clint Eastwood, you know, that's riding roughshod over people, but he's tough. He knows what he wants and he goes out to get it. In the environment I came from, governed just after the war, there was nothing else to do but play games. Football was natural, more so in my case, because my father was football mad. He was certainly the biggest influence in my early career. He played for Glen Torn when he worked in the shipyards in Belfast. His influence was to play and practice. He always said, if you're going to be something, be good at it.
the football that we, we loved best was included what we would call gallus individuals. Gallus, uh, swaggering, tanner ball players kind of thing, you know? Jim Baxter is the best example uh, of that in the post-war years. And they always wanted, uh, I mean, as kids, nobody wanted to be a goalkeeper. That's why, we've, that's why we've got a bad tradition of goalkeepers in Scotland, because when you picked your team, you know, you picked everybody else, and the two boys that were left at the end, usually we fellas with glasses like the bottom of milk bottles, you put them in goal. Nobody wanted to be a goalie, they always wanted to kill the ball, bring it down and score goals and, and that kind of stuff. But, you know, there was another aspect to it. Uh, they liked Tanner ball players, but they didn't like them playing for themselves. So everyone could express themselves as long as they were doing it within the team effort. People who bother to look back and appreciate what has been done for them will always recognise the Bob Innesses of the world. We hear about people get OBs and night use and all the rest of it, but why do these guys not get it? And there's Bob Innes, 40 years with having their old boys club. 40 years having to strive and beg and borrow to keep that club alive. I sometimes read about young players talking about the biggest influence in their life, and it angers me when some of them say their manager and their coach, I think they have their part to play, but it gets me. I like to see people acknowledge their school teacher or their boys club official or their father. I remember Alec Ferguson coming to Harmony Row when he would be about 10 or 11 year old with a big number of boys from the Govan High School. And they all came in as a team prepared to work, to do a lot of business, and they were all tremendously enthusiastic. And uh, I also remember him playing with tremendous enthusiasm. As I say, he was a part of a good team and they worked together. Not only did they play football together, they went about together, and to me, that makes a happy team. Alec has always been tremendously enthusiastic in working to get himself on a ball and to encourage other people to play to him. And this is very important when you're a manager. You've got to have the, a team working with you. And he seems, in my opinion, to have the right idea regarding that. I was born in the shadow of a fairfield. And the blast of a freighter's horn Was the very first sound that reached my ears On the morning I was born The great thing about Govan is its pride. It's full of life and vitality springing from the shipyards. But my father didn't want my brother and me to go into the yards, funnily enough. He wanted us to do something else, like engineering or whatever. But my only hope was to be a player. And times got harder day by day along the riverside. And I've often heard my mother say it was tears that made the climb.